How would you define a COVID hero? What makes a person rise above the circumstances? Look for extraordinary ways to help a neighbor. Serve as a role model for the rest of us. I think one answer is, I know a hero when I see one. And so many people saw a hero in our honoree, Carlos Reina, an FSC case manager at Toberman Neighborhood Center in San Pedro. FSC is Toberman Neighborhood Center's Family Source Center. The FSC provides various services such as pre-employment and employment support, housing, rental and utility assistance, GED, ESL and after-school programming, computer literacy and financial literacy. In addition, there's a food pantry which provides bags of groceries to individuals and families in need every week. FSC services are accessed through individual case management with staff developing long-term goals with each member. Carlos grew up in San Pedro and still lives only blocks from Toberman. He brings with him the unique perspective of someone who has been part of the community his whole life. His mom was a school teacher at Bandini Elementary while he was growing up. Carlos remembers coming to Toberman as a child and is now proud to give back to the community that he lives in. He holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in psychology from Cal State U Dominguez Hills and has been serving others as an FSC case manager for about three years and actually has over 10 years of customer service experience. A lot of his coworkers would describe him as hardworking, passionate, and dedicated to helping those in need. This past year, during the COVID-19 pandemic, he says he was truly honored to be able to teach others how to be successful case managers during these hard times. Carlos says he loves every aspect of his job, and he strives to provide the best service that everyone truly deserves. Outside of work, friends and family would describe him as responsible, caring, and a gentleman who has a big heart for others. At the beginning of the pandemic, Carlos came up with an innovative process to streamline paperwork for clients, to reduce exposure for both clients and staff. He was committed to providing aid to the community and continued to see clients in person, even when he had the option to work from home. He realized those affected by COVID did not have technology expertise and many lost their phones when they were no longer able to pay their bills. Carlos is an avid fan of both the Dodgers and the Raiders. Why is he able to relate to the clients so well? Because he's their neighbor. His colleagues and his Toberman clients all know him as a person who is kind, compassionate, and always goes the extra mile to ensure people are taken care of. Congratulations, Carlos. We are truly grateful to you and thrilled to honor you as a COVID hero. Hello, my name is Carlos Reina. I'm one of the Family Source Center case managers here at Tormer Neighborhood Center in San Pedro, California. We also service the Wilmington, Harbor City, and Harbor Gateway areas. I would like to first thank the South Coast Interfaith Council for this COVID-19 Hero Award. It truly means a lot to me and I truly appreciate the honor. However, I cannot take the full credit for this award. I'd also like to thank the other FSC case managers and the Tormer staff. We all came together last year in March of 2020 to help our families. One of the big things at that time was food insecurity. We were able to sign up families to gain access to our food pantry. And one thing that we did different was we were able to get this food delivered to their front doorsteps. Another thing that we were able to do is between April and June of last year, we were selected as a location to distribute the Angelino cards. The mayor has set up a fund where people would donate money and this money would then go back to the families who were affected by COVID-19. These families received a debit card between $500 to $1,100. So when they came to our facilities, seeing that we were open during the height of the pandemic, they were just appreciative knowing that they were getting that help. And every time I talked to a client, I just felt that connection knowing that we were able to help them. And that was the biggest joy that I was able to obtain during this pandemic. One other thing that was a big thing that the other, the other case managers and myself were able to give to our families and to the clients was be able to apply for unemployment insurance. Everyone was having a difficult time getting access to their unemployment benefits, but we were able to find a way to give them 
the money that they truly deserve since they have lost their job to COVID. All these services just was a tip of the iceberg of what we have to offer here at Tobermint. We also offer other, our own utilities rental assistance. We also have an after school program that was online and it's currently still is that will help through our K through fifth graders, also a college corner for our middle school and high school. I'd like to thank again, the South Coast Interfaith Council for this award, but in the end, awards are just awards. It's what we do for our community to help these families, especially during these difficult times. And here at Toberman, I can truly honorably say thank you. Thank you for having our doors open and thank you for being there for the families. Because I know every day as we go through, we're here for them. And as we come out of this pandemic, we're still gonna be here for them. So thank you again, South Coast Interfaith Council for this award. It's truly an honor. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. I have the distinct honor of being able to introduce a friend of mine. We call him Dr. Rich, but he goes by Dr. Richard H. Wynn. He's earned his Bachelor's of Science in Biochemistry and his Master's of Science in Biochemistry and Molecular Biology at the University of California, Riverside, our alma mater. Go Highlanders! He traveled across the country to receive his MD at New York Medical College, after which he's returned to his roots and completed his residency at Harbor UCLA Medical Center in Torrance. He joined the faculty at Harbor UCLA Medical Center in general internal medicine prior to starting his pulmonary Critical Care Fellowship at UCLA Medical Center. Dr. Wynn was on the very front lines throughout the pandemic and even still took precious personal time to demonstrate for Black lives. As a first-hand witness to racial and economic disparities in health, he took a brave step into the political arena to run as a delegate alongside me and many others and is working tirelessly on healthcare legislation to bring more equity to our healthcare system. All of this with the background of being an American Asian who has been subjugated to hate and taught to keep a low profile to succeed in the American dream. Born and raised in Southern California, Dr. Nguyen is an avid fan of the Los Angeles Lakers. When he's not at work, Dr. Nguyen enjoys yelling at, <laughs> yelling at his team on TV, cooking and traveling the world and spending time with his newborn baby girl. For his selfless service to others and the commitment to advocating for those who are often not heard, we want to honor him today as our COVID hero, Dr. Nguyen. Thank you so much. I am humbled to receive this recognition. This past year and a half has been a roller coaster ride to say the least. I've experienced great sadness. I've witnessed children losing their parents, parents losing their children, husbands and wives losing spouses, grandparents lost before they could pass on language and culture to their families, and families in general being torn apart but in all of this darkness, I also found great pride and happiness. I saw our community of nurses, respiratory therapists, ancillary staff, and physicians come together to fight and save lives. We've had great victories. We cheered on patients as they left the hospital after harrowing courses of treatment. We've seen fathers make it home just in time to walk their daughter down the aisle. And we've seen this South Bay community come together to fight against this virus by socially distancing, adhering to mask guidelines, and getting vaccinated. And with that, I want to dedicate this recognition to all of the frontline workers, the nurses, the respiratory therapists, the ancillary staff, my colleagues. And also, I want to dedicate this to this beautiful community who've helped us get through this pandemic and continue doing so. And finally, I'd be amiss if I didn't say thank you to my beautiful wife and mother to my newborn baby girl. There's no way I would have made this through without you. So with that said, again, I want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for this wonderful recognition. Thank you, Dr. Hume. We are so blessed to have physicians like you in our community, and we are so grateful to be able to honor you today. Our keynote speaker is another individual in our community Pastor Q Jean-Marie, who founded the Row LA, also called the Church Without Walls 13 years ago. The former Virgin Records rapper turned evangelist, activist, and organizer left the music industry 
1994 to follow a religious calling. The Rowe Congregation gathers every Friday night on the corner at 5th Street and Wall in downtown LA Skid Row, feeding people both spiritually and physically. Pastor Q is also affiliated with Clergy and Laity United for Economic Justice, the Black Jewish Alliance, and the We Will Live Coalition. Q's work includes helping to address unjust public policy issues in LA, as well as advocating for the rights of homeless people, immigrants, Muslims, and countless other groups. Please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker, Pastor Q. Thank you, Cheryl, for that beautiful introduction. And thank you to SCIC for having me today. Loved ones, during this pandemic, our human connection has thoroughly been challenged in so many ways. That said, we have been challenged to find creative and innovative ways to stay connected. For example, in the beginning of the pandemic, when stay-at-home orders were given in Southern California, at your places of worship, as well as at the church with our walls in Skid Row, we could no longer congregate. As a result, we were challenged regarding whether we would stay at home or still serve the houseless folks in the streets of Los Angeles. We weren't challenged regarding whether we would continue to congregate or not because we had already decided that we would no longer congregate in order to keep uh, our folks safe. But the people on the street still needed to eat and they still needed other resources like clothes, hygiene kits, shoes, socks, blankets, jackets, uh, because it's cold at night, tents, and other things that would help them survive. And we know that we were lead, we didn't even understand that it was better to be outdoors uh, during COVID. And so we were really afraid of what would happen to the houseless community had COVID-19 uh, run rampant to that community. So we were worried each and every day. As we were contemplating these things, we got word from a community partner that due to COVID-19, most of the religious and grassroots folks who had been providing food to folks in Skid Row had pulled out and that there were folks coming from freeway underpasses into Skid Row because resources elsewhere had dried up. So, I encouraged our older folks to stay at home in order to protect themselves because we would know they were because we knew they were um, at greater risk. And as we've done for the past 15 years, we strapped on our N95 and we took to the streets to buy, provide food and resources. The only thing different is that we had on N95s because we weren't sure what this virus could do to us. Before long, we had gotten together with our community partner, the Los Angeles Community Action Network, and were building hand washing stations, providing PPE and other resources. In essence, though we did not fully understand COVID-19, we took as much precautions as possible but continued to stay connected the best way we could. And even though it was limited and different from what we were used to, the true essence of connection was still evident. And that essence is the essence of love. The essence of love. Thus, we tried to care for our neighbor as much as we could and as much as we cared for ourselves. Even COVID-19 could not break that connection. Though maintaining this connection was not without fear and risk, it was also not without love. 
So as the country continue its reopening, many of us have mixed feelings. I recently went back to the gym as indoor mandates were lifted. I witnessed most folks working out without masks. I was getting excited, but I decided to keep mine on. <laughs> and a week later, due to the Delta variants, uh, indoor mass was encouraged again here in Los Angeles. I did not have an emotional reaction because I had already decided that I would go at my own pace. And so as the country continues to reopen, what I've attempted to keep in mind is that connection is important because we connect to love and to be loved. Secondly, the new and old creative and innovative ways that we've learned to connect during the pandemic, though not ideal, they are valuable. And thus, as we move forward, we can use those uh, new ways of connecting to expand our intimacy and to expand the human family. And thirdly, as I've already mentioned, I go at my own pace. So I would encourage you as we are reopening to go at your own pace. I would like to leave you with these helpful words. In my faith tradition, hope is the absolute assurance of coming good. I want to say that again. Hope is the absolute assurance that good is coming. And no weeping and discomfort may endure for a night or for even a season. Joy is around the corner. Speaking of joy, let me close with this. I know I said earlier I would like to leave you with these words. So you anticipated that I was closing, but... Y'all know I'm a preacher. So let me close with these words. A few weeks ago on Juneteenth, we were in Tulsa, Oklahoma's Greenwood community to commemorate the 100 year anniversary of the Tulsa race massacre. I experienced a flood of emotions. But one thing kept coming back to my mind as I was looking around. The people of Greenwood are resilient. And even though the signs of systemic and structural racism are still clearly evident, 100 years later, the people are still rebuilding. As 50 or as over 53,000 mostly black folks flooded into the city to create what I call a highly melanated situation. There were also sprinkles of folks from various ethnicities. And when Cameo hit the stage, we all rejoice. Word up. You see, even in the rare view of immense hatred and destruction, Greenwood has now become a place of connection. I'll say that again. Even in the rare view mirror of, event, of immense hatred and destruction, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Black Wall Street, Greenwood's community has now become a place of connection because folks came from all over the nation to be part of this memorial and this commemoration on Juneteenth. Black Folks Freedom Day. And I anticipate for years to come, Greenwood will be that place of connection. So again, though we are going through a pandemic, and though this pandemic may or may not, or may not be man-made, we do know, like Tulsa, we can rebuild if they can keep rebuilding 100 years later, a couple years later, two or three years later, we can start rebuilding and continue rebuilding.
Beloved, one love, and thank you for listening. And may God go with you. Blessings. And blessings again. One love. Thank you so much, Pastor Q, for that beautiful message of the importance of love and connection. You truly continue to, continue to be an inspiration to so many of us, and we really are blessed to have you, uh, not just part of this gala, but really just part of our, our extended family and community. Thank you for everything that you do. I wanna take this opportunity before I uh, ask Carol Widener, SAIC Board uh, President-Elect, to introduce our final COVID honoree. Um, I wanna take a moment and just express my thank you to all the sponsors and supporters uh, for this, of this gala and of the council in, gen in general. Um, it, is, it is not, uh, without your support, we truly could not exist. And so we're so grateful. I wanna acknowledge our peace sponsor for this gala, Dunya Ramadan, and also our hope sponsors for this gala, Dr. Yahya and Nasreen Jordan, Elena Maloney and Munir Moon, Dr. Sara and Omar Dean, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, uh, Darul Hikmah Institute, an human, uh, humanitarian agency that's helping uh, other nonprofits such as Ummah Clinic and Shelters for Battered Women here in Los Angeles, as well as abroad, and also for Amana Mutual Funds. Um, we're going to have a short message from Amana Mutual Funds, and then I'd like to welcome SCIC board member Carol Widener uh, to introduce our final COVID hero of the afternoon. For more than 30 years, Amana Mutual Funds have provided halal investment vehicles serving the unique needs of the Muslim community. Discover how you can align your investments with your principles in a retirement, health, or education savings account, or invest for Hajj. To obtain this and other important information in a prospectus or summary prospectus, please visit amanafunds.com or call toll-free 1-888-732-6262. Please read the prospectus and consider an investment's objectives, risks, charges, and expenses carefully before investing. Investing involves risk, including possible loss of principal. The Amana funds limit the securities they purchase to those consistent with Islamic principles. This limits opportunities and may affect performance. Thank you, Pastor Q, for those powerful words. Your acts of service to our community at large are nothing short of inspirational, and we are blessed to have you a member of our SCIC Interfaith family. Thank you for all that you do. Hello, everyone. My name is Carol Winder. I'm a member of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It is my pleasure to introduce our final COVID hero this afternoon. Cage Bertie Mutrias was born in 1973. Being the firstborn, he was fiercely protective of his parents his entire life. He came into this world with a hard head and a soft heart. When his sisters, Junie and Jeannie, were born, they instantly became his best friends. Cage loved music. He made it his life. This passion began with a voice class at Cypress College. It was here he learned to play the classical guitar, not knowing where this passion would lead. He eventually transferred to Chapman University where he majored in music therapy. In April of 2010, Cage was baptized into the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. His service there included ward choir director, stake youth choir director, director of children's music, and ministering to other members of the church. At the core of Cage's heart, was his daughter, Juliana. She was his one true love, and from the moment she was born, they were inseparable. He took her everywhere, from sports games to movie nights, with friends to theater practice and to church choir rehearsals. Everything he did in his life was for Juliana. Eventually, he would add to his little family a rescue dog named Timber. In 2006, 
Page was hired by Newport Bay Hospital as a music therapist, and he remained faithfully employed with them until his passing. Newport Bay Hospital was his second home. His co-workers were more than just friends. They became his extended family. Outside of his job responsibilities as manager of the music therapy department, he would spend time customizing birthday songs for all the employees. Like so many loved ones around the world, Cage contracted COVID. Following his period of isolation, he went right back to work. He wanted to work in the COVID wing so that none of his employees would have to be exposed to the virus. His life was cut short when he suffered complications due to COVID and passed away a year ago at the young age of 46. He gave so much of himself to help his community and the people of the community Cage spent his time in service of others. He was a father, son, brother, and protector. For his incredible acts of selflessness, we are honored to recognize him posthumously as our COVID hero. His beloved daughter, Juliana, will be accepting on his behalf. There are some who bring a light so great to the world that even after they have gone, the light remains. This was Cage Mutreus. Cage Bertie Mutreus was born in 1973 to parents Luxana and Prawit Mutreus. Cage loved music and those who were privileged to enjoy his music loved it too. He used his gifts to bless the lives of thousands. His work at Newport Bay Hospital as a music therapist helped so many overcome great difficulties in their lives. In one such case, his remarkable gifts were used to calm the mind of my now departed mother, who was suffering from late stage Alzheimer's disease. When Cage noticed the last name of the patient, he immediately assigned her case to himself and took special care of her. His work allowed her to return to normal care and be visited by her family. Of course, no words will ever be able to express the gratitude we all have for the magic this hero was able to work, using music to bring light even to those who had so little light left. It was while serving in the music therapy department that Cage contracted COVID-19 in May of 2020. He died in June from a COVID-related heart attack. In April 2010, Cage was baptized as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He was part of the Elders Quorum as a teacher, as well as having served in the church's temple. He coordinated music and choral events, including concerts and musicals. His humble light was felt by all. All who knew Cage also knew of the great love he had for his daughter, Juliana. She was always with him, whether it was sports games, movie nights with his friends, or theater practice. We all could see the same light in Juliana's eyes that was emanating from Cage's. He loved her so deeply, and it was always a joy to see them together. Eventually, Cage added to his little family a rescue dog named Timber. Cage made sure his dog donned the same sports attire and accessories of his favorite sports teams that he also wore. There is not a dog in the world that was as spoiled and loved as Timber was by Cage. Cage spent his time in the service of others. He gave so much of himself to help his community. He was a remarkable father, son, brother, friend, and protector. In the end, he laid down his life for others in the battle against the COVID pandemic. He will be forever remembered and forever missed. Hello, my name is Juliana Matrias. My family and I feel very blessed to accept this award in honor of my father, Cage Matrias. I want to say thank you for this award on behalf of my dad and my entire family. Music has always been one of his greatest loves. He loved sharing his talents with anyone he could. He spent so much of his time serving the community through music. I know my father would be very humbled by this award. Thank you again for selecting him as a COVID hero. Thank you, Juliana, for accepting this award on behalf of your father. He was a great blessing to all who knew him. I know he's very happy and proud of you, as we all are. Another group of amazing youth 
is the Los Angeles Jewish Community Children's Choir. This choir elevates a new generation of singers through a diverse repertoire, music, musicianship, skills, social, historical, and cultural awareness, and personal responsibility and enhancement. Their mission is to inspire young singers who come from diverse backgrounds to represent and appreciate their unique culture and heritage through song throughout the Los Angeles Jewish community. We, as we near the end of our gala today, we are so happy to have them with us. I give you the Los Angeles Jewish Community Children's Choir. Absolutely beautiful song brothers and sisters forever we shall be such a beautiful sentiment it really it truly encapsulates what we believe in as an interfaith council the fact that we are one family of humanity uh, that said I'd like to actually invite uh, three of my close friends to share a little bit about the SCIC um, first it, we have Sarah Roberts from the Baha'i community of Southern California 
then Reverend Steve Wilson from Pacific Unitarian Church, and lastly, uh, our treasurer of the Interfaith Council, Patty Heckman. The work of the South Coast Interfaith Council is incredible. I have found such knowledge, such friendship, such hard work, such commitment, and especially through the hard times that we are living through. So I thank you first and foremost. I'm incredibly impressed. I was introduced to the South Coast Interfaith Council through my community, the Baha'i community. And here I see our very central principle of unity and diversity being played out and so beautifully exemplified. So I really encourage everyone to get involved, contribute, whatever you can, because just imagine what we could do with more resources. And just to reiterate, I am incredibly impressed and grateful to all of you for your friendship and hard work. And there is so much more to be done. So thank you. Hello. My name is Reverend Steve Wilson. I'm the minister of Pacific Unitarian Church, where I'm standing here. Uh, we're supporters of South Coast Interfaith Council. I am on the board. Um, the Interfaith Council is sort of a beacon of uh, open-mindedness and connection for people in this whole South Bay area, all the way to Long Beach. It's about the first place people turn. People tell me all the time they don't know I'm on the board. They say, oh, you should call the South Coast Interfaith Council. They do good work. They connect people of different faiths. They step out in the community on important issues around June 19th and celebrate diversity. Really, they create, they're one of the pieces of the puzzle of creating a safe culture in America, right? For people to have safe ideas, put their faith to work. Um, just one of the pillars of, of, you know, connection and tolerance in our world. So we're proud to support um, South Coast Interfaith Council and uh, I'm proud to be on the board. Good afternoon. I hope you're enjoying this gala celebration as much as I am. I just wanted to take a few minutes of your time to talk to you today about SCIC and ask for your support for the work that we do. Now, reflecting on today's theme, celebrating the awakening of the human connection, I realize that our programs are all about that one key ingredient, human connection. So what is the SCIC human connection? Well, with over 150 faith organizations across the South Bay and Long Beach areas, representing over 10 faith communities, and throw in many different nationalities, races, and cultures, you come up with a very diverse group. And because of this diverse human connection, we learn so much from each other, hearing perspectives that differ from our own, learning from different cultures and nationalities and religious beliefs. These help us so much. Without these encounters, it's so easy to become narrow-minded in our thinking. I believe this is one of the greatest values of the SCAIC. So today, I ask for your support for the, to the SCIC, for you to make a donation to the SCIC. As a nonprofit, over 95% of our funds come from donations, so we do need your help. In addition, this year we are not offering our regular programs of the Concert and Unity Dinner. As such, today's gala becomes a major fundraiser for us that must see us through the end of the year. So we do need your help. Thank you so much for your attention. We are so grateful and appreciative of the support that you have shown us. We are so grateful also to you, our SEIC family. Thank you. Thank you so much, Patty. I too invite you to share your kindness if you're able to. The next slide will show you three different ways in which you can do that. Please know that no amount is too small or too big and it is indeed your generosity that allows us to continue the work that we do. Now, as we close this afternoon, we have a beautiful prayer by Jose Osuna from the Native American tradition, a song called Unite that really captures what we, the SCIC, stand for. And lastly, a special note of gratitude from the board of the South Coast Interfaith Council. 
Now, before I invite Jose to offer the closing prayer, I do want to make a note that you probably noticed that we didn't have the Pacific Islanders uh, perform during our gala as we had anticipated. Due to a last minute logistics, they weren't able to join us, but we look forward to them doing so in our uh, upcoming galas in the future. So before I, I pass the mic, or, or in this case, the, the screen over to Jose, I just wanna take a minute and thank, uh, say a few thank yous to share our gratitude with everyone. Um, first and foremost, to all our COVID heroes for your recognition and for your work. Uh, our artists and our performers for sharing their talents with us. To Pastor Q for reminding us that even COVID couldn't break the connection that we all share, a connection that's created by the love of one another. To the sponsors for making this gala possible. Thank you to the gala committee for the hours and hours of meetings to plan this program. To the SCIC Board of Directors for their commitment to the success of this Interfaith Council. Uh, to Armand and the amazing tech team who sees us to amaze us. To Cheryl Benz, our SCIC Office Administrator, for her dedication and her acts of selflessness in always ensuring that all our programs are completed with excellence. And most importantly, thank you for being here today with us and for being a part of our Interfaith family. Please join us for all of our upcoming programs and events, all that information about which can be found on our website at www.scinterfaith.org. And now, please help me welcome Jose Osuna, who will offer the closing prayer followed by a note of gratitude from the SCIC Board of Directors. Hello, everybody. My name is Jose, and I represent the Totorame community from the region which is now known as Mexico. This is my friend and my brother, Herminio. He comes from the Ayotlan, Chichimeca region of what is now known as Mexico. First and foremost, we want to acknowledge the land, the unceded Tangva land that we sit on today. We want to honor those folks and the fact that they've taken care of this land for centuries. With that being said, today we're going to offer up a prayer. We will offer this prayer up in the form of a song. For us, smoke and songs represent prayer that are taken up to the Great Spirit. With that, I open the floor up to my brother, Herminio. <laughs> Thank you. 
together the hearts unite and bind together. Join the chord, all the souls. Join in the chord, all the souls. Oh Lord, make these faces radiant through the light of Thy oneness. Unite and bind together. Danke. Danke schön. Tausend Dank. Mahalo. 
Hamsa Hamnida. Muito obrigada. Terima kasih. Salamat. Spaceiba. Kapkun. Asante. Toda. Dhanyavad. Rakab ohat bahat shukriya. Isari isto. Thank you. Mocha Karim. Khaili Mamnun. Shukran and thank you. We look forward to seeing you next year for our fourth annual Interfaith Gala. In the meantime, we hope that you'll join us for all our programs and our events that create communities of compassion among people of different faiths and cultures right here in Southern California. Until then, be safe, be well. All being together makes us better. Oh, oh, oh. Mm, we're stronger this way. stronger every day reach out now take someone's hand appreciate everything we have cause being together makes us better being together makes us better oh stronger this way oh, oh, oh together we grow stronger together we grow stronger